have just recently passed the CISM Certified Information Security Manager exam by Osaka. And I wanted to share some quick tips on how to set yourself up for success for the exam. First of all, I want to say this is not intended for uh, junior uh, security analysts or security professionals, someone that hasn't been in the field uh, for too long. Um, this, these quick tips are to someone that has been in the industry over five years or someone that has passed the CISSP. Um, because I, I feel that the CISSP more than prepares you uh, or sets you up for success in studying for the CISM. Um, the tools that I use to study for the CISM uh, certification um, was Kelly Henderhan's live um, CISM uh, class. She has a uh, CISM class and she has a live CISM class. I found the live CISM class kind of easier to follow for myself. Um, and that's on Cybrary. Really enjoyed that, really um, made the information digestible and um, really helped me in preparing for the exam. Also used the CISM all-in-one uh, book, good book. Um, I really don't read books uh, from cover to cover, not a big fan of that, uh, but it was a good reference uh, study material to lean towards. Um, also use, um, used the uh, official study bank um, from CISM, uh, from Osaka. So let's get into the tips for the CISM. Um, the first tip I would say is to think like a manager, um, not like an analyst, not like an engineer, um, not like a technician. Um, we don't fix problems as a CISM. Uh, we advise, we're risk advisors. Uh, so definitely keep that uh, manager's cap on while you're taking the CISM exam. Um, another tip I would say is the business uh, comes before security. If there's a tiebreaker between security and business, uh, business will win that tie every time. Um, if there is a tie, if there's a question that kind of presents it as a, a, as a tiebreaker, um, the tiebreaker is a risk assessment or risk analysis. Uh, they mean the same thing um, as you just weighing out the risks. And usually at that point, once you kind of come to a decision, you document and you um, you go to senior management to make the final decision on that. Uh, so once again, the tips are think like a manager. The business comes first. Um, there can be too much security. Um, security should enable the business, not hinder the business. Um, Security should be baked in, uh, not sprinkled on. It should be in the beginning of the process. It shouldn't be at the end of the process when you kind of figure out, uh, wait a minute, we need security for this. It makes it much harder. Uh, it's much more of an expensive process. So security needs to be at the beginning of any uh, new initiative. Um, what I would also say is the steering committee is very important uh, when mentioned in the CISM. Uh, the steering committee is basically a committee of, um, of individuals that usually makes up senior management. It may have um, high level security officials and business leaders. So kind of a good mix of leaders to kind of make decisions or approve security projects or programs. Um, so your security programs will be set up for success. They'll basically have um, the blessing of the business. You know they have the blessing of the business because the steering committee is kind of appointed by the business and kind of links to the business um, strategy and objectives to make security decisions. Um, what I would also say is have a good balance when you're studying for the CISM. And what I mean by that is watch videos, 
uh, read books and do practice testing. I would start with a practice test as an assessment and make sure that that practice test has metrics, you know, at the end, metrics to tell you um, which domain you scored the worst in or your weakest domain. So the weakest domain you want to dedicate most of your time to and, you know, study the other domains, of course, um, but the bulk of the time is going to go towards the weaker domain. So that's kind of kind of how you set yourself up for success to attack the weaker domain um, or domains. Hopefully, you know, kind of concentrate on the weakest domain and study the rest of the domains as well. Like I said, videos, practice tests, uh, books, you know, and uh, so videos, practice tests, books. You kind of have a good mix. Uh, the last week, I would say, kind of dwindle that studying down to practice tests. Uh, practice tests is going to be very in, important. That's the actual, that kind of gets you game ready, gets you used to answering the questions, uh, gets you used to the vocabulary, um, the flow of the questions. It kind of gives you that, that, um, it's almost like playing a video game. How do you react if you're playing a security manager in a video game and you get these questions and scenarios? Do you have the right answer? Do you as a system know what to do? Um, so that's why we really want to get down into the, the practice test on the last week and kind of supplement um, some studying um, around that, that those practice tests. So like, let's say if you encounter some terms you're still not familiar with. You want to make sure you kind of reference those terms and make sure you have a firm understanding of those terms. If you have a process or a framework that you still don't understand, you probably need to go back to um, your study guide of choice and read that full section and make sure you have an understanding of that. Um, what I would say on the last night of testing um, at that point, um, you're within 48 hours, you can't cancel your test. So what I'd say, if, if you're up studying late, I'm not a fan of the all-nighters that leave that in college, in high school. Um, all-nighters is not going to help you. Um, it's it's really going to hinder you far asleep. So if you got to make a decision at, at that point, I do not understand all the information and I need to study some more. I'm going to pull all nighter. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just go to sleep, get at least eight hours of rest, get up fresh, maybe get a light breakfast and be set up for success um, for your test. Uh, what I would also say is I'm not a fan of like heavy cramming before tests. It kind of, I, that's once again, I feel like if you're either ready or you're ready, um, like that frantic cramming, just just trying to study as much information as if, that you can. Um, if you're not ready at that point, you're just not ready. You, you kind of got to take a deep breath and and see what happens with this. one. But I do recommend some light um, cram sessions the day of just to kind of go over some points you, you still feel weak at, you know, just glaze over it, uh, skim over it, kind of do some light. Cramming, that doesn't hurt anything. It kind of, you know, solidifies some things, but not real heavy cramming, stressing yourself out before the exam. All about kind of searing yourself on the day of the exam. Uh, another tip, I, I wasn't a big fan. I've taken a lot of uh, exams over the years, and I've never been a big fan of taking breaks. Um, but what I will say about this, this particular exam, it is 150 questions. It's three hours. Um, I heard somebody say this when I was preparing for the SISM, um, you know, to take breaks. And I think you get two 10 minute breaks during the exam. Um, what I would say is definitely take one of those breaks. Um, taking a break does so many things for you. If, if you have to take a, a restroom break, you can take the restroom break and concentrate take a sip of water, take a quick walk and come back, kind of get the blood flowing back to the brain. You'll notice when you sit back down, you're refocused, you're re-centered, re-energized. Um, 
and you have less questions. It's not I'm um, doing 150 question tests. You get back and oh, I only have 50 questions left. Then that's more digestible um, to do 50 questions. So that's that's really all the quick tips I have. Uh, my resources, um, few quick tips. Um, just good luck to everybody out there, and I hope to hear about new systems in the future.